Hi guys, hello and welcome to Chugging Along. I'm Sam. And I'm Tim. And welcome to today's video. So thanks for joining us on the second part of our voyage to Clan Glocklin. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about and showing you how we made our way out of the KNA on the east end side of the KNA and made our way up towards Henley on the River Thames. In our last video, we made it safely two miles <laughs> east of our winter mooring in Thiel, didn't we? And we made it to the Cunning Man pub. And we woke up that next morning with a big day's cruising ahead of us, mm -hmm. only to discover that we had found out that we had ran out of gas. So we mm. use gas to do all the cooking and stuff like that on our boat, and we keep two bottles at the front. So I went over there to go and change it. But whilst we were doing this, uh, we had to change the regulator as well because that was broken. And the reason why that's broken is quite interesting because these bottles of gas on the boat, usually to screw things on, you have lefty loosey and righty tighty. But on these, for some reason, they're righty loosey and lefty tighty. Yeah. That's so right. <laughs> yeah, so for one of the first times we did that, yeah, I got a spanner out and did like that and it sort of broke it off a little bit. So <laughs> we bought a replacement regulator just to be safe. It still worked, but just to be safe, yeah, we, yes. we we bought a replacement one with that in mind that you know you spin it on the other way. So yeah, did all of that sort of stuff and uh, turned it back on and there we go. We had gas again so we could finally make our morning cup of tea. Oh yeah, you need that before we go start on a big cruise. You need yeah. that gas. Definitely. <laughs> After we had our cup of tea, we were able to actually start our cruising and it was a beautiful morning. It was lovely, the sun was shining, so it filled us with good positive energy for what we had to do, which was going to be quite a long day's cruise. So as we left our mooring, we actually passed under Burfield Bridge and made our way past Burfield Island, which is where you can actually moor up. There's a boat club there, you can moor up um, long term if you want to, which is very convenient if you live and work around, or if you work around Reading, it's quite easy for you actually. And whilst we went past Burfield Island, there was this boat that we saw, we've seen it quite a few times. Mm. And it's such a beautiful boat. The painting on this boat is unlike anything else we've seen on any other narrowboat um, whilst we've been in the canals and we've never seen the owner we've never seen the name of this boat so we can never actually get more information about it but we can always just go past it and just it just it's such a beautiful boat really yeah. to look at and I think even our antenna enjoyed the view actually of this boat as we were going past it. <laughs> After that pleasant start to the cruise, it was time to do our first lock of the day. Mm -hmm. And if you notice here with the footage, something quite strange was going on because I was doing the lock paddle here. I didn't do all of it, I just did a little bit of that because <laughs> what we're doing, we're practicing. Each of us is practicing to sort of swap our roles. So I do usually do the steering mm -hmm. and Sam usually does the locks. But our goal this summer is to have one day where I do all of the locks and Sam does all of the steering, yeah? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing that. Uh, yeah, we, we did that, didn't we? But, yeah, Sam got back to, you know, doing the lock and I got back to doing the steering and, and uh, yeah, we were going down in the lock. Um, and going down in locks is easier because the boat does mm. move around less. So, Especially yeah. when going through the double locks on, yeah. on the K&A because it's less ferocious. With the, with the gate paddles, it's usually quite ferocious if you're going upstream. Mm. So, downstream, a complete problem. Breeze. As we came out of the lock, we started making our way towards Fogney Island Nature Reserve, which is absolutely lovely, beautiful stretch of the canal. It's very quiet as you go past there, um, which is quite deceptive because you have this moment of peace and calm as you then approach Fogney Lock. Now, this is one of the most brutal locks, in our opinion, yeah. on the KNA. Uh, we've seen, we've read stories, we've heard stories about this lock, and we've actually been through it before, so we know how brutal it can be. And the reason why is because as you come out of the lock, the lock landing area itself is actually right next to a weir. So it just, it, it does seem quite, it does look a bit um, scary when you're approaching the lock and the idea of actually having to stop with your boat there and then get back on the boat does seem quite, uh, did seem quite scary for us. But luckily we had help from a, a passerby called uh, Brian. He was a fellow boater himself, so he was very familiar with Fobney Lock and he agreed to hold the gates open for us and to close them so I could just get back onto Marielle without him having to wait at the lock landing bay next to the weir and then we could just continue on. So that's exactly what we did. 
did and at that point as we started going through the outskirts of Reading we came across the familiar sights of the houses with the gardens backing out onto the yeah. K&A and we even got to see the narrowboat shell which we had seen before on our journeys onto we the We love this shell, we absolutely <laughs> love this shell. It's, I'm glad it's still there, I did wonder if maybe over the course of lockdown it something might have happened to it. Yeah, I reckon it's been an absolute lockdown asset, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> if it's got heating in it then definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so now we were in Reading Town Centre, weren't mm -hmm. we? We were cruising through there and then quickly you make it to another crazy lock so you have two crazies in a row <laughs> this one is called county lock that is also right next to a weir there yeah. and also has the lock landing off the lock right on it as well so with this we got through the lock everything was fine but instead of uh, waiting on the lock landing afterwards I just slowly pulled the boat mm. out of the lock and then just waited when Sam closed the gate I just waited just out there just at the gate there where the water wasn't too fast flowing and then Sam, you walked over there to go and press the traffic light yep. button, didn't you? So there's a traffic light there in Reading Town Centre because a couple of the bridges are quite narrow. So if you had, for example, you had two wide beams mm. coming against each other, I don't think they could make it. That create a whole situation. So you press the button there, then the light turns green, and that just lets you know that there's no other boats going. So we were green, we were ready to go, and we uh, started cruising through, didn't we? We did, yeah. We managed to get through County Lock unscathed, which was brilliant. <laughs> and we managed to get through the bridges and make our way through the Oracle Shopping Centre. Now, I've been to the Oracle Shopping Centre quite a few times as a shopper, so I can only imagine it must be quite a surreal experience for shoppers and anyone going on their day-to-day -day business seeing a narrowboat suddenly cut through the shopping centre and it's also quite surreal for us just watching because suddenly you've gone from like the calm of the towpath mm. to suddenly being surrounded by lots of restaurants and shops. Definitely it is an amazing part of design I think it's a really good mm -hmm. idea to do that and you'll notice there that in the footage that we've got you can see there's a McDonald's <laughs> right next to the water there and I would say I would challenge anyone and say surely that is the closest you can get to a, a narrow boat drive through <laughs> McDonald's right that is so, it does yeah. technically say no more in this so you can't do it but I was thinking that could be like a future upgrade of the canal people say how can we make the canals but i would say a chug through mcdonald's surely is something that's got to be on the cards do you reckon i, I think there'd be some other upgrades people would prefer before that one to be honest well not me but yeah that i would say that is a priority <laughs> <laughs> So upgrades and priorities aside, we then started making our way, continuing on our journey. And as we approached one bridge, we noticed another that was to our left, as you'll see in the footage here. And we've seen this other bridge uh, quite a few times. We think we know it's quite low, but we reckon we could take an arrow through there. And we weren't too sure where it led, so we had a look at our Drew Marlin map. And sure enough, actually, that bridge leads you on to the Reading Loop, which takes you around Reading Jail, who's obviously one of its most famous residents was Oscar Wilde. Mm. So we didn't get a chance to go around that loop. Yeah, and next time. Next time, yeah, yeah, it'd be quite interesting to sort of see that. Probably have a look at the banks that's been painted on there. Oh, still on yeah. It. I don't know. Yeah, I think Might it think. still is, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, have a look at that then. Um, so we, instead, we continued on our journey and we made our way to the first EA lock. Um, of the day and that is Blake's lock and um, usually when we pass through this lock um, I think the lock keepers either been on lunch or they've been off duty so it's been self-service and I've usually done it uh, myself this time however I was really happy to see the lock keeper there <laughs> it's always nice when you get an extra pair of hands yeah. really and he was a really lovely lock keeper who's actually quite familiar with uh, quite a few of the narrowboat youtubers and he did say he's keeping an eye out <laughs> for chugging along so hopefully we've Got a new subscriber in him. Yeah, he's managed to get through a few of our videos. <laughs> so if you're watching, hello, Mr. Lockie. We'll be sure to give you a mention. I do quite like uh, the lock at Blake's lock because unlike the other locks we've been through, you have almost like this helm, this wheel that you use mm. to turn the paddles. And it's so it's so much fun. It looks like you're playing some sort of crystal maze game. So I always enjoy us going through that lock. As you can see here, we go under a railway bridge and that is effectively the last thing you mm. will do on the Kennet and Avon Canal. And then you reach out to the junction which takes you on to the River Thames. So you have either left or right. Left will take you to Oxford and right will take you 
to London. So we are actually going to Oxford eventually, but we're doing a little <laughs> detour now. So we are going to go right towards London for now. So we turn right onto the River Thames. And the first thing you notice, and you know it's coming, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you, mm. you, you turn out onto the River Thames and just how wide it is gets you. It, it is it feels huge and it is just, yeah, it is a, a completely different world. And when you actually see narrow boats coming towards you on the river, so they're sort of wobbling towards you, they, they, they look like they're sort of not meant to be there. And it is quite funny. They do work, they are fine, but maybe it's just because we're so used to being on canals. But yeah, they do look funny. And yeah. And they, there we are, we're back on the River Thames. And yeah, it is beautiful and it is a, a wild adventure, isn't it? It just feels completely different. We've approached the first electric lock of the day, which was Sunning Lock. And there we had the lockkeeper John and his lovely dog, Luca, who helped us get through the lock, which was great. It's always nice to have an extra pair of hands and as we came out of the lock we actually went past our friends Josh and Ember were actually moored up on their boat their Dutch barge the chimp and um, we <laughs> waved over and shouted some tried conversations to, tried to have a conversation <laughs> yeah. didn't we bit difficult with the engines running um, but we did manage to have a little bit of a conversation with them and we actually got some rare footage courtesy of Ember of Mary Al out on the River Thames yeah but she filmed herself not us which we'll show you as well cool thank you for that Ember <laughs> Thanks, yeah Ember. At this point we were getting into our river cruising and we were making up quite good time really because we were going downstream on the River Thames. Uh, you do go a little bit faster than when you're on the canals because mm. you don't create the wash that you do on canals that sort of wobbles the other boats because it is so wide. So we were sort of making some real map progress. But then <laughs> uh, all of a sudden our average speed was about to come crashing down because we had to go and top up our water tank and of course have lunch after that as well so we topped up our water tank 500 litres uh, it took about an hour to fill it up nice. and then we did all our bottles of drinking water yes. as well we also took advantage of using the bin barge as well <laughs> so yeah we got our services done had our lunch at ship lake that was the area and you might remember ship lake uh, for long-term viewers because that was where we were stuck on the River Thames later on last year because mm. it was going too fast flowing it was red border and we had to stay there so we got to speak to the lock keeper and all that sort of stuff it was quite a stressful time for us it was very nice to be there in good weather and <laughs> good conditions so yeah it felt good basically to be at Ship Lake uh, when everything wasn't everything wasn't going bad <laughs> <laughs> it felt much better. We actually made some friends whilst we were at Ship Lake Lock and there was a couple called John and Lane um, who were renting their narrow boat for a whole month. Usually I think some people do it for like a week or maybe a weekend but they were doing it for a whole month but for them that's quite normal because they've done quite a lot of narrow boat trips and they were actually heading to London um, through the Thames on their narrow boat trip and we got talking with them and because they were heading our way we thought we'd also go through a lot together and as you're going to see in the footage here we went through a lot and their lovely little dog she had her life jacket on because yeah. safety is very important well so did we at this point it's oh like yeah we had too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> life jackets all around on this trip and um, as we we're coming out of the lock this was quite I'd say quite a momentous moment for us because obviously as Tim's mentioned we were stuck at Ship Lake for quite some time whilst the Thames was red boarded last year and we had never gone beyond that point so mm. we hadn't seen what was beyond it and it, so it did feel quite momentous coming out of the lock and suddenly we were on that side everything was fine and uh, yeah as we went through first thing that hit us was just the sheer fastness of the hills and shall we say a level of poshness that we weren't necessarily um, used to um, in our previous moorings in the field. Yeah, so. I would say, I would say any, if you own a house that overlooks the River Thames, in my opinion, it is no longer a house. It should be officially labelled <laughs> as a castle. That's my opinion anyway. Well, I mean, some of, the, some of these houses were huge. I mean, either castles or estates, they were massive and um, it was quite... It was quite awesome for us to really to be part of this uh, scene and take it all in really. <laughs> and in fact, one of the lock keepers that we got talking to um, as we approached Marsh Lock, which is the final lock as you come into Henley, he did say that I think 12 of the houses that were very close to the lock were owned by the same person. <laughs> so it goes to show there's money in those Henley Hills. Yeah. It really is. We came out of Marsh Lock and fortunately for us our moorings were very close to lock and I think it was probably about five minutes before we found a nice spot in which we could actually moor and we moored up for the night went into our world deck 
got a glass of sherry, put our feet up and enjoy the sun setting over the River Thames in Henley. So in Henley, yeah, it is quite an affluent town and a lot of its wealth did actually come through the river itself. So it's a great way to enter it. And you know, it's so posh, we actually had to pay 10 pounds to more there <laughs> just for the privilege of the Mary Elle <laughs> staying there that night. And uh, yeah, the w one thing that I did notice, yeah, I did notice was there was a type of boat that we only saw this area on the Thames made of this beautiful, like really sort of expensive looking wood, little small things. And uh, they sort of came out in the late afternoon when the sun was starting to set and they were just sort of kept going up and down the river. I called them wine boats because <laughs> everyone out there had a nice bottle of wine and they were pouring it, just going up and down, up and down. And when the bottle of wine finished, they just went back home again. So yeah, if anyone knows, what are these types of boats called? Cause I love them way that they look but yeah if anyone has any information on them that would be great to know still. i like them being called wine boats yeah i mean we ours, ours could be a sherry boat and theirs could be a wine boat so we had made it to the end of our cruise so now let's get on to those crucial statistics so we did 12 miles seven locks in eight hours so thus making our average speed 1.5 miles an hour wow. I must say yeah it was slowed down a lot by the two hour lunch break and water filling up but still average speed is average speed it's a little bit quicker than uh, quicker. than last time's one mile an hour average speed so yeah we are getting a little bit quicker on our trip up to north wales there aren't we so yeah that's good and so our next cruising vlog will be a special one because it will be a brother battle and it's going to be a narrow boat race it's not going to be two narrow boats you know racing against each other but it will be me and my brother somehow a narrow boat racing something or somewhat we will you'll have to find out and see but it's going to be a very special episode of chugging along Ooh. so yeah we look forward to sharing that with you i remember guys no matter what you do in life you got to remember to keep, keep chugging.